Hello there, beautiful humans. Melinda Joy Crossroads Storyteller here with a deeper look at the biblical tarot. I am a professional tarot reader, and before I was a tarot reader, I was a biblical studies scholar and a pastor. This is going to be a multi-part series, so be sure to check the description box below to find the playlist. And in this series, we're going to be comparing the Nicholas Conver Tarot de Marseille and the Pamela Coleman Smith A.E. Waite Tarot Deck Centennial Edition to the Biblical Tarot. Note that all of the opinions and perspectives on these cards will be from my unique perspective. I have not yet read the guidebook that comes with this deck, and I am super stoked to explore this biblical tarot deeper with you. Eight of Candles, Philip and the Ethiopian. When they came up out of the water, the spirit of the Lord suddenly took Philip away, and the eunuch did not see him again, but went on his way rejoicing. So in this Acts 8.39 story, we have Philip sharing the gospel with a stranger he comes up across. That's the eunuch from Ethiopia. And there is a spiritual component to the story because after Philip baptizes the eunuch or the Ethiopian, then he disappears um, out of nowhere. So we have this sort of speed and this spiritual quality to the Eight of Candles, whereas I think the eights in the other two cards depicted are significantly less filled in. Usually in these cards we have a picture of some kind, but even in this Waite Smith deck we have a very simple image of a lot of movement, a lot of fire, a lot of action. And so it's cool that we see that explosive action channeled in a spiritual conversion, acceptance of one's higher purpose kind of connotation. Nine of Candles, Satan tests Job. In all this, Job did not sin by charging God with wrongdoing. Job 1, 22. I really like this story because if you read anything from uh, Elaine Pagel, you'll know that the book of Job is where Satan is very clearly, at least in the Hebrew reading of Job, Satan is very clearly a member of the court. Satan is not even just Satan. It's the Satan. Like it's a job description. It's not a individual. Anyways, fun details on Job. So in all of these cards, we have someone who is burnt out and struggling. We have far too much fire. There's nothing else growing anymore. Just excessive amounts of fire. Here we have someone who's banged up and using a wand to or a staff to maybe support themselves and stay standing. They look quite vigilant. And here we have someone having a whole bunch of really uncomfortable things happening to him. All of his children die. His body feels horrible. It's interesting that we don't have depictions of his body sores here, but we do have the friends that are talking poorly about him behind his back. So I think maybe this is a nod to this. Like, this is making me think that maybe these ones are... Uh, not all supporting this person and that's maybe why he's so on edge because the friends that are supposed to have his back don't have his back. Either way, however you think about it, 
we have a struggle occurring here. We have some hard times happening here. And in this card specifically, we have this hint that a uh, way through is to continue to trust and have faith that everything is in God's plan. Ten of Candles, Jeremiah's Burden. Why did I ever come out of the womb to see trouble and sorrow and to end my days in shame? So Jeremiah definitely has some downer experiences, as do many of the prophets in the Hebrew Bible who are seeing their community from a futuristic vantage point and frustrated with their community for not following their insight and moving into a better future and instead staying stuck in the past. I think that is a really interesting overlay on the Ten of Wands. We have the utter destruction or conclusion to the Ten and potentially new life occurring on the other side of that conclusion. Here we have someone very much overburdened, not yet concluded, needs to release. Um, and here we have a very similar image of someone carrying too much and having an energetic burnout as a result. Yeah, these two individuals need to let down their load so that they can start again. Page of Candles, Miriam's Praise for God. Miriam sang to them, Sing to the Lord, for he is highly exalted. Both horse and driver he has hurled into the sea. Exodus fifteen twenty one. I was very happy to see Miriam in this deck. I would have been very disappointed if Miriam was not in this deck. Miriam's one of my top ladies, one of my favorite characters in the Hebrew Bible or Old Testament. And in this depiction, we have her celebrating. We have her leading a song of celebration after the Exodus has concluded, after the Israelites have officially left Egypt and crossed the Red Sea and survived their captors coming after them. So we have a new beginning. We have artistic expression. We have a young individual who is expressing themselves freely and I think that is consistent with the meanings behind the other two pages or ballet. Knight of Candles, Joshua, leader of faith, have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Joshua 1 9. So the knights are stereotypically very active. We have these two individuals on horses, which gives them uh, significantly more speed and mobility than the page had. And in this depiction, we have Joshua very active also. Uh, he looks like he's in the middle of a battle of some kind. I think that is really interesting because the wands or batons or candles, fire suit in general, has this connotation of uh, aggression, um, but also potential for purpose and purposefulness. And I think Joshua very authentically holds both of that sort of dichotomy in his oneself, which is a fantastic trick to have done with the Knight of Candles. Queen of Candles, Deborah, prophetess and leader. Now Deborah, a prophetess, the wife of Lapidoth, was leading Israel at the time. Judges 4-4. Four, four. Deborah is also an individual I would have been very disappointed had she not been in this deck, but she is in this deck and she is a badass lady. So of course she's the queen of candles. 
She's very much a war general in her story, in addition to being a judge and a leader to the Israelite people. She also leads the army against the Philistines or the Sea People, and uh, she's very intelligent, very powerful, and very successful. So I love that she is representing the Queen of Wands, someone who I usually say is the baddest bitch of the deck, if it's appropriate in a, that particular reading to say such words. And lastly, we have the King of Candles, King David. I have been with you wherever you have gone, and I have cut off all your enemies from before you. Now I will make your name great, like the name of the greatest men on earth. 2 Samuel 7, 9. So this is at the end of David's life, and he has done all of his lesson learning. Uh, he does a lot of lesson learning in his lifetime. It's interesting, though, because he is, he's definitely very powerful for a lot of his reign, and but the end of his life is not especially a powerful moment. I guess this moment in time is, is before, at least in the depiction, he is pre-cripple, pre-dementia, pre-dying, um, pre and so we could say this is still him in his heyday. And the verse is very much reflecting on his successes and all the ways God has supported him. Um, so perhaps that is a significant component that this card is bringing to these cards is this um, divine support. This, perhaps these individuals also didn't get to where they got without divine intervention and the fates supporting them also. Very cool. Thank you so much for looking at the biblical tarot with me a little bit deeper. Be sure to like and subscribe and you won't miss any of the future content that's coming. So many blessings.